me? Excuse me, where's everybody going? To Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil? I'm sorry, what was that again? I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god, not the god. I think you as a glass is half empty kind of guy, am I right? <laughs> Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. Well, it's Groundhog Day, again. And that must mean that we're up here at Gobbler's Knob, waiting for the forecast from the world's most famous groundhog weatherman, Punxsutawney Phil, who's just about to tell us how much more winter we can expect. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on another video. This is Going to the Movies, and we are Ryan and Virginia. Today we're up in Illinois, in a town called Woodstock, right outside of Chicago, where they filmed the movie Groundhog Day. And, uh, and you know, a lot of videos have been done here, but I think we actually found a new location that may previously not have been known. It's not a huge deal, so don't get too excited or mad at me when it's not that exciting, but um, it's cool and you'll see it in a few. But first, I wanna talk about why did they choose Woodstock instead of Punxsutawney to film the movie? And we're gonna have a special guest answer that question. This is Steven Tobolowski, AKA Ned Ryerson. Ryan and Virginia, Stephen Tobolowski here, a.k.a. Ned Ryerson. Congratulations on the YouTube channel talking about locations of movies and what better location to talk about than memories of Woodstock, Illinois and Groundhog Day. As I recall, and this historically could be inaccurate, but it was basically between two places, the real Groundhog Day location, which is Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and closer to Chicago, which was closer to Bill's home, and closer to Harold Ramis's home in Woodstock, Illinois. Well, visually, Harold Ramis wanted a town square where you can have the polka band and people doing polka celebrations. It, it suited itself more to filming. I don't know if you've been to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where the real historic Groundhog Day reveals whether he sees his shadow or not, but it's done in a very secluded area, way up in the mountains at about dawn. And it's almost a holy experience where you're standing with 16,000 people in silence as it is announced as to whether the groundhog saw a shadow or not. Not a big boisterous celebration. Our first stop today is going to be the Cherry Tree Inn Bed and Breakfast. And this one's not too far. I would say it's probably less than half a mile away from the main action of the movie but you'll recognize it as the bed and breakfast where Bill Murray stays in the movie. He hangs out here with Rita on occasion and he also wakes up here every day. The room was done on a set. Everything interior was done on a set but they were inspired by the actual inside of the house so it looks very similar but they've done a lot of renovations since then. One shot was done from the inside out of this window and it matches up still. Here it is. Also, if you want to uh, stay here, you can. It's now, it was a house when they filmed the movie, but it's now a bed and breakfast, just like in the movie. So you can come stay here. We didn't do that just because we had the dogs with us, but we would have loved to because the people that own it were really nice. Um, they were a really cool family. They gave us a tour, let us walk around and explore, even though we weren't staying there. They also had a lot of cool memorabilia in there to check out, including the alarm clock that wakes up Bill Murray every morning. Okay, we've arrived in the historic Woodstock Square and our first stop, or our first area, because there's a lot of spots here, is gonna be Ned's Corner, where Bill Murray comes walking around the corner. And Ned Ryerson is walking across the street and spots him and runs after him and annoys him for uh, a, a walk and talk that Phil Connors doesn't wanna be a part of before he goes to do his Groundhog Day news hit. Uh, but let's go to our special guest, Stephen Tobolowski, again for a behind the scenes story about this spot. When I see Bill on the street and I stop and go, oh, Bill, Bill Connors, oh, and I run toward him. I had to step on exactly the same brick in the street. They had red brick street. Uh, they put an X on the little brick and I had to step with the same foot, turn, lift the same hand point and then run toward Bill Murray to indicate that it was the same day. So they had a young uh, assistant director, AD they called them, it was one of his first projects, if not his first, and his job was to point at me 
to like you're about to put your foot on the brick. So the little X is there, he's watching me. I start from out of frame, walk into frame, he points at me, I step, turn, and do the opening line so we could repeat it. That man's name is Jim Kesselwise, and I ran into Jim again because he was my producer on Silicon Valley. Oh my gosh. You better be nice to those people on their first jobs because <laughs> that first step is a doozy. After he steps in the puddle, he walks across into the square and is headed to do his news hit. Here's a few screenshots from the square and that particular scene. Here's the gas station where Phil Connors goes to and he's trying to find a ride out of Punxsutawney to get back to Pittsburgh. But there's a snowstorm so he can't get out. The building is still there but it's not used. It looks like they're trying to fix it up into something. But you can match up this train station in the background. So in Groundhog Day, they use a shot of the Opera House, which in the movie is the hotel where Rita stays at. They use that as the establishing shot for the bar, but that's actually located in the old courthouse, which is right here. So we're gonna head in. So, what are the chances of getting out today? The van still won't start. Larry's working on it. Wouldn't you know it? Can I buy you a drink? Okay. Jim Beam, ice, water. For you, miss? Sweet vermouth in the rocks with a twist, please. On Phil's third day of repeating Groundhog Day, he tries to explain to Rita what's going on, and of course she doesn't believe what he's telling her, but he does that here in what was called the Tip Top Cafe, and I think it may have been a vacant building at the time. They definitely created Tip Top Cafe for the movie, but after the filming, they opened up a cafe there called the Tip Top Cafe, and I think it ended up closing down. It became a couple other kinds of restaurants, but right now it is a taco restaurant, and here are some images from the inside. When we're doing uh, film location hunting, it's always awesome when you can get interiors because they always, you know, a lot of times build sets. So it's always fun when you can go to a real life place. And this bowling alley is still open and you can go bowling there. Ed, who owns the bar, said that the previous owner had made some updates to it before he bought it in, I think, 2003. And he decided to change it back so it would look exactly like the movie, which took some time to do because he had to go and find all those matching pieces, like those blue triangular things above the uh, pins up on the wall. Those had been removed, so he had to go find some new ones to put up there. After Phil Connors and the two guys leave the bowling alley, they get in the car and they start driving under the influence all across town recklessly, eventually resulting in a car accident, which causes Phil to be arrested and thrown in jail. And here is that new location I was telling you about. I was watching the commentary with Harold Ramis and he said he filmed the jail scene in the cells that were still in the courthouse. So I asked when we went to the bar if they had any cells in there and a bartender said yeah and took us back and that's where they keep all their storage for the restaurant and the bar. And so here that is. Once you walk out of the bar again, if you look to your left, you'll see the bank. It's, it is a bank in real life, but this is where the guys pull up with the money truck and he just walks up and takes a big bag of cash and in doing that, goes and buys a Clint Eastwood outfit and takes a girl to the movies. And that is right around the corner at the Alpine Theater.
So we're back in the square for a few nighttime scenes that happen as Phil is trying to romance Rita into a relationship. They have their dance here in the gazebo. We recreated that. We also built the snowman in the exact same spot. Ours wasn't as tall though because it was so cold that I don't think we had the patience to make a full-size snowman. Uh, but we also recreated the snowball fight and uh, this picture got onto Chicago local news, so that was pretty awesome. This is the piano teacher's house. I think something that's interesting is on the second day he asks the lady where she's going when he comes out of the cherry tree inn and she says we're going to Groundhog Day. Well, that's the piano teacher and her house is right here which is in front of the cherry tree inn as you can see from this angle. So I don't know where she was before but she wasn't leaving her house to go there. She was, must have been in somebody else's house. But anyways, he goes here, he pays her a thousand bucks I think it was to kick out her current student and get her to teach him some lessons so he can become good at the piano because Rita mentions that one of the qualities she would like in a future husband is someone who plays an instrument. And so he gets really good at the piano here. There's a portion of the movie where he takes an interest in the older homeless guy and tries to repeatedly save his life and, and fails continuously. but. He's uh, in this alley right here, and it's always interesting to see the proximity of different movie locations, because sometimes they'll make it look like it's really close, but it's actually like an hour apart. In this case, it's right across from the Alpine Theater from earlier. If you were standing in the Alpine Theater under the marquee and looking straight forward, you'd see right through the alley. So here is the spot where he tries to revive him, and the spot where he finds him to take him to get a meal. And that all happens right here. Towards the end of the movie, he goes to this uh, dance event thing that's going on and, and he's playing piano when Rita gets there and she's impressed by his playing. And then they have the auction where they auction the dates off. That all happened in the Woodstock Moose Lodge. And they were cool enough to let us come in and take some videos of that area where they filmed at. And it's so cool because the floors are still the same, the curtains are still the same and uh, just another spot that looks exactly like it did in the movie. Strike up the music, the band has begun. The Pennsylvania Polka. Pick out your partner and join in the fun. The Pennsylvania Polka. It started in Scranton, it's now number one. It's bound to entertain ya. Everybody has a mania to do the polka. And now it is time for Woodstock Willie to tell us whether we're going to have an early spring or more winter. All right, here we go. Woodstock Willie, gather around. Now you know why we have to have Mark. <laughs> the biter.
All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this February 2nd at 7.07 a.m., Woodstock Willie, the seer of seers, prognosticator of prognosticators, emerged reluctantly <laughs> and a bit grouchily, I must say, but nonetheless alertly in Woodstock, Illinois, to wish his faithful followers a happy Groundhog Day 2021. <laughs> Willie looked skyward to the east, <laughs> then behind to the ground, and stated clearly in Groundhog Ease, I definitely do not see a shadow. Thanks again guys for watching. Uh, that's gonna do it for this video. And if you don't mind, again, please click subscribe, please click like. We're gonna be doing tons of filming location videos. They're all on the way. And if you subscribe, you'll see them as soon as they come out. We would appreciate it and we'll see you next time.